visual effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, and we are shortly talking about how to control Ninja Live actors using the sequencer. First, have a look at the project homepage, the user manual have been updated, a new chapter 23 describing the process. And the project has been updated as well, as you could see the version number ends with 4, and it's a minor update. It is level 5 that has been extended with a single stage and this single stage is demonstrating how to control Ninja Live actors and colliders using the sequencer. So let's have a look at this setup. First I have a level sequencer placed here. In the content browser you could find a level sequencer in the tutorial per sequencer subfolder and if you double click it, in the sequencer panel you could access the keyframe parameters. So what do we have here? Now first let's have a look how, how it behaves. So I'm starting the game and yes it's a single collider moving in the simulation area and the mo motion of the collider, this grey sphere is keyframed and you could see the brush size parameter is also changing because it is also keyframed. So we have two things here. We have uh, an object, as you could see, here's the motion trajectory, an object that is keyframed to move and driven into the fluid simulation area. And second, we have uh, the simulation area itself with a dynamic parameter that is animated. As you could see in the key uh, sequencer, we have like these two tracks, first the sphere and the transform, the location is animated with keyframes and we have the container, the fluid simulation container and the brush size parameter is animated. So uh, have a look at this short description on the stage and the setup and uh, the manual and hopefully you could understand how it has been done but shortly I would like to demonstrate it on an empty test level. So I'm jumping to this test level and uh, this is a standard fluid simulation container with default parameters except I have rescaled it a little bit to make it more visible and I'm grabbing a single object on stage rescaling it a little bit making sure that uh, we are in the overlapping zone of the fluid simulation container if you click on the container uh, this um, yellow cube is indicating the interaction zone, the overlap zone. You could make it visible by going to the details panel and sticking this show interaction volume. If you switch it on it will visualize what is the proper collision zone. So I would like to animate this object first. What I need to do is going to the content browser and wherever I would like to right click and say in the animation group level sequence I call it test and if I double click it um, it is loaded into this sequencer panel and I'm adding this object as a track and I'm placing keyframes for the object and I'm moving the time slider a little bit moving the object a little bit, adding more keyframes and I repeat this process to have a proper spatial motion. You could see that we have already uh, visualized this motion trajectory. So that's fine. Please notice while I'm moving the slider in this timeline in the sequencer the object is moving but the fluid simulation is not responding. It is because Fluid Ninja Live is a runtime solution so you have to press play to visualize the thing and have a look if I'm moving the slider now the object is moving in the fluid simulation area now um, this is one important thing to note is that uh, while you are in play you could move the slider and you could place keyframes so it's fully functional it's just uh, you are not working in the editor but uh, while the game is in the play mode.
Of course you could edit the keyframes while you're in the editor, but for previewing you really have to press play. Um, next thing I would like to do is um, to force this setup uh, to play my keyframes. Many ways to do this. My solution is to go to the level blueprint, open it up, and um, in the content browser place the level sequence on level. So I was dragging the freshly created level sequence on level. You could see this little icon appearing. And now that it is on the level, I could access it in the word outliner. And now that I have accessing it in the word outliner, I could drag it to the level blueprint. And I'm accessing uh, the sequence player. And I'm giving this command to play looping. And I'm setting up this thing to start on even begin play. I compile and save the level blueprint. Let's see what we have now. Right on, my object is moving repeatedly. Yep, I'm just resetting this to end with the last keyframe. And let's see how it works. So I have an animated object here. Next thing I would like to do is to animate uh, one of the parameters of the Fluid Ninja Live Actor. Mm, please pay attention. If you visit the manual, we have a dedicated chapter describing Fluid Ninja Live parameters. It is chapter 21. It is called the complete list of parameters. Now, most of the parameters are not interesting for us because they are running only once at initialization. And obviously, if you would like to animate something dynamically, you have to do it every thick. So, uh, have a look at 21.1 UI Expose Parameters. Uh, accidentally, these parameters happen to be the parameters which are refreshed every thick. So, if you scroll down, you could have a complete list of these parameters. Like, here is the brush size, which we have been talking about, and like uh, 20, 30 more parameters, turbulence, velocity field offset, noise, textures, all these could be animated. Now, how do we make these parameters accessible for the sequencer? It is printed in red in the manual, so please pay attention. Um, going to the content browser, and selecting Ninja Live component. I open up a blueprint editor by double clicking Ninja Live component and there is a panel called variables. And if you have a look at this panel, you could find all the variables used by Ninja Live. And if you click a random parameter and uh, focus on the details panel on my desktop it is on the right you could see this parameter called expose uh, to cinematic expose to cinematic and by default it is switched off which means all the parameters which is more than a hundred parameters in the ninja live component are by default not accessible for the cinematics so uh, to make a parameter accessible, you would like to select it and tick Expose Cinematic on. Now, to make this final, you have to compile the blueprint and save it. And you have to do this only once. Once you have done this, it is saved with the project settings and this, from now on this parameter is available. So, we have actually two parameters available, brush size and brush strength. But have a look at this complete list of parameters. And I especially advise you to go to this preset variable group. 
and enable this expose to cinematic. So once you have done and you enabled your favorite parameters to be accessible, I go back to the sequencer and I'm adding the simulation container as a track. Add Ninja Live. I'm adding Ninja Live component as a subtrack. And if I click on the plus sign, I have this list of available parameters. As you have seen, brush size and brush strength are available. Just to make this uh, totally sure, here's this velocity offset X. And exposing it to the cinematics, compiling it, saving it, going back to this track, review, and as you could see, Vela Offset X has appeared in the list of available parameters. So let's just stick with brush size and animate this. First, I'm placing uh, a keyframe at zero. Next, I'm making it a bit thinner. Oh, by the way, in the first keyframe, I would like to be thick as a brick and make it thick again and make it thin again. Let's see what we have. Aha, uh -huh. the brush size is changing. It is animated because uh, I have placed a few keyframes. So what have we done uh, to sum it up? We have placed an object animated it in the sequencer. We have done some work in the level blueprint and we are forcing this level sequencer to play looping repeatedly. We have en enabled this parameter exposure for the cinematics and we have added Ninja Live component as a track. And when it's all done, the object is moving and the parameters are animated. So Basically, this is the way how you could access and animate parameters and objects. Um, shortly, that's the case. So please have a look at the manual and the test level. And see you next time.